Our first witness is Douglas Matthews, Senior Vice President, U.S. Steel. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Douglas Matthews, and I am Senior Vice President for Industrial Service Center and Mining Solutions for United States Steel Corporation. I have worked at U.S. Steel for almost 30 years. I have extensive experience in both production and sales of both flat-rolled and tubular steel products. On beha behalf of the largest American headquartered integrated steel company, I thank Tim Reif of the Office of United States Trade Representative and Ron Lorenzen of the U.S. Department of Commerce for their work in organizing this important and timely hearing. Today, the American steel industry is in crisis. This is not an exaggeration. It is real. It is alarming, and it is dangerous. Unfairly traded steel imports have reached historic levels in 2015 and 2016, taking almost 30% share of the domestic steel market. The impact on American industry and workers has been and continues to be devastating. U.S. Steel and other domestic producers were once again, to, once again compelled to file three dumping and countervailing duty cases in 2015 in, a, in an effort to halt at least pieces of this crushing tide of illegal steel imports. The first petition relates to corrosion-resistant steel imports from China, South Korea, Taiwan, India, and Italy, which rose by almost 85 percent from 2012 to 2014. These foreign producers doubled their market share in less than 15 months taking significant market share from domestic mills and created an inventory surplus that continues to depress U.S. market prices and reduces volumes domestic mills would have otherwise supplied. Cold rolled steel flat products from Brazil, China, India, Japan, South Korea, Netherlands, Russia, and United Kingdom increased by nearly 120 percent in less than two years. Hot rolled steel products from Australia, Brazil, Japan, South Korea, the Netherlands, Turkey, and the United Kingdom increased by approximately 73 percent from 2012 to 2014. Let me put this in perspective. The loss of 4 million tons from these three products would have been roughly the equivalent output of four domestic blast furnaces. These cases illustrate what the industry confronts in our own market and the costly, continuous legal dance we must perform in order to persuade our own government that the ruinous effects of illegal dumping on our market and our companies are real, dire, and are unabated. Our trade laws need to be vigorously enforced and properly interpreted. Foreign steel manufacturers are also devising new methods to counter our trade laws and circumvent U.S. anti-dumping and countervailing duty orders. The methods used to conceal the real cost of production and sales are sophisticated and designed to elude the commerce investigators. My compliments to the Department of Commerce, who are overworked, understaffed, and are being outgunned, outspent by high-tech, well-financed foreign operations that cleverly shift costs amongst products, create fictitious invoices for fees never incurred or never paid and falsely identify the origin of products. The American steel industry alone cannot reverse the negative effect of this crisis. Through the Carnegie Way Business Transformation Initiative, U.S. Steel has undertaken a series of actions to improve our competitiveness. This, however, may not be enough to mitigate the injury resulting from the surge of unfairly traded steel imports, and every day we bear witness to the consequences. Since the beginning of 2015, United States Steel has been forced to cut nearly 5,000 family-sustaining, good-paying, middle-class jobs and placed more, thousands more on more notice. <clears throat> and last week, we announced additional layoff of 25% of our non-union workforce. In Alabama, U.S. Steel was forced to permanently shut down Fairfield's blast furnace, the last remaining blast furnace in the southeast, due to the effects of unfairly traded steel imports. This marked the end of more than 100 years of historic iron making at our company's plant in Fairfield, Alabama. At U.S. Steel's Granite City Works and Gary Works facilities, coke making operations were permanently closed in 2015 due to the surge of steel imports. Production curtailments in 2015 at our company's Great Lakes and Gary plants 
can largely be attributed to the effects of unfairly traded steel imports. Let us be clear, the genesis of the current steel crisis is not local, but its profound impact continues to burden American workers, American communities, and impacts our ability to independently maintain national critical infrastructure and preserve our national security. The dramatic rise in global steel marking, making can be attributed to China, the world's largest producer and exporter of steel. Since its accession into the WTO, Chinese steel production has risen steeply and today produces more than 425 million metric tons of excess capacity. However, there are a number of other countries, including Vietnam, India, Saudi Arabia, and South Korea, who are also ramping up steel production. That excess capacity is being dumped into markets all around the world, with the ripple effect turning into a tidal wave of dumped steel into the U.S. market. <coughs> Since many foreign steel companies are state-owned or subsidized, they are not bound by the same basic principles of transparency, nor a sense of fair play that is the American way of life and commerce. <clears throat> we believe, indeed all Americans believe, that the U U.S. government is duty-bound to protect its national security interests by enacting a more effective U.S. trade policy. America must retain the ability to produce American-made steel. We believe that our government must formally recognize the American steel industry as, as a national security interest, which must be sustained and supported by our laws and policies. A failure to do so will render this nation vulnerable, both from an economic and national security perspective. Our CEO, Mario Longhi, often cautions that we do not build steel mills in a time of urgent need. We depend on them. Steel is the foundation upon which America's national security and critical infrastructure rests, including our transportation systems, our energy supply, urban centers, clean water, and safe food supply. These are all dependent on steel. American people will not stand for the outsourcing of this critical capability, nor will we permit our nation's security and manufacturing bases to become dependent upon and held hostage by foreign steel. If the U.S. government fails to act, you will witness the demise of the American industry upon which our national security interests rest. We urge you to take all possible action to ensure that the American steel industry remains viable and healthy for generations to come. Thank you for your time.